The linguistic meaning we said it means al mu'lanu wal ma'dhunu fihi. Those are the two meanings it carries. So, for example, you say baha fulanun bisirrihi ay adharahu. If a person brings out his secret, you say baha fulanun bisirrihi. Fulan has brought out, announced his secret ay adharahu. Um, but when you use the word baha, abaha, when it comes to wealth, what does it mean? Give. That's what it means. To give permission for somebody to use it. وَأَبَاحَ الرَّجْلُ مَا لَهُ A person, he gave out, he permitted for his wealth to be taken. وَأَبَاحَ الرَّجْلُ مَا لَهُ A person permitted his wealth to be taken. أَيْ أَذِنَ فِي الْأَخْذِ وَالْتَرْكِ He permitted for it to be taken or left. وَاسْتَبَاحَ النَّاسُ الْعُشْبَ أَيْ قَدِّمُوا عَلَى رَعِيهِ عُشْبِ إِذَا الْكَلَى الرَّضْبَ Technically, what does it mean? What does it mean technically? Remember, um, the book didn't define it technically. The book, how did it define it? Again, تعريفه تعريفه بالرسم والمباح ما لا يثاب على فعله ولا يعقب على تركه The way he defined it is what? That the مباح is ما لا يثاب على فعله The person is not going to be rewarded for what? ما لا يثاب You're not going to be rewarded على فعله doing it ولا يعاقب And you're not punished ها, For leaving it Whether you do it Or you leave it None of them you get punishment for nor do you get rewarded for doing it, nor do you get punishment for leaving it. It's your choice. We'll do what you want. Wastilah hmm. and technically, what does it mean? ما لا يتعلق به أمر ولا له لذاته. Pay attention. This is very important. This definition is very, very important, and we have to analyze it. ما لا يتعلق. It is that which a order and a prohibition is not attached to it in and within itself. Uh, an order. Or a prohibition is not attached to it in and within itself. This mubah, a order or a prohibition is not attached to it in and within itself. Such as what? Kal igtisalu lit tabarrut. A person wants to have a bath so he can warm, you know, he can cool himself down. Now, is there order to it that's connected to it? This action of having a bath to just, it's a hot day and you say, you know what, I'm going to have a nice cold bath. Is there an order from the Quran and the Sunnah that orders you to have a bath when it's a hot day? Is there a prohibition connected to it? No. Good. Jameel. Sah? There is no amar wala nahi muta'alliqum bidhati al-fi'l. Good. Wal mubashara al-layali al-siyam wa mithal al to have uh, intimacy with his wife or to foreplay with his wife in the nights of Ramadan. Hey, what about that? Is there any order connected to it? No. There's no order connected to it. Is there any prohibition connected to it at night of Ramadan? There is no, there is no prohibition in and within itself. Good. So, when we say, ما لا يتعلق به أمر ولا النهي No order or no, no order or no prohibition is attached to it in and within itself. What has left the Rome? Al-wajib and what? Al-mandub. Al-wajib and mandub Amr is connected to it. والنهي ولا النهي And also a prohibition is not attached to it. What leaves? المحرم وال والمكروه المحرم والمكروه لفظ because لأنهما because both of them are what من هي عنه من هي عنهما both 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 of those two are prohibited pay attention the third قيد the third قيد which is لذاته in and within itself no order or prohibition is attached to the action in and within itself but the issue in and within itself in 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 and within itself لذاته also what leaves what leaves is إذا كان المباح If this mubah is a wasila to li amrin bi It's either a wasila to an order Or it's a wasila to a prohibition And it takes a warning of whatever it's leading to If what it's going to lead to is a order Then the wasila Then the mubah now becomes an order Does that make sense? Even that the order is not attached to the action in and within itself It is attached to the wasila uh, it's attached to the ghaya, sorry, the goal. And it's a wasila. The mubah is a means to what? To that ghaya, that goal. Then it takes the ruling of that goal. Or it takes the prohibition of it. If that which is leading to is haram, then this thing which is mubah in and within itself was mubah, becomes haram from you, prohibited from you, because of that which it will lead to. That which will it lead to. Let's give it, let, I'll give an example of a mubah, that is a means to an order. 
eating. Eating is it mubah? Is it a mubah? Good. In its original essence, is it mubah? In and within itself? Yes. Good. Lakin law tawakaf ali baqa'ul hayat. A person is about to die. He's on the brink of death. And there's a halal uh, meat or food in front of him. He's about to die. And this person chooses not to take it. And it's a life and a death situation. He's going to die if he doesn't take it. In this situation, what do we say? In this situation, it takes because Allah ordered us to safeguard our what? At that particular moment, it takes the command of that which it's going to lead to. Because in the Sharia, I came to do what, Ikhwani? Al-Daruriyatul Khamsa. The five things that our religion came to safeguard. From those is what? The lives of the people. So you are now obliged. It becomes a command from the Sharia to eat. You, know, you have to eat. Now what we're talking about is that the food is halal. That the food you're eating is halal. Pay attention. As for the second one, which is, it's now going to lead to a what? It's now, it's, the thing in itself is mubah, but it's going to lead to a prohibition. That which something you're prohibited from. It takes the ruling of the prohibition. Such as what? Eating a fruits. Eating fruits. Huh? Eating fruits. Is it mubah? It's mubah, right? Apple juice. Uh, not juice, sorry. Apples and uh, pineapples. Um, grapes. Fruits. Is it mubah in and within itself? Of course, the answer is yes. It is mubah in and within itself. Lakin, what about if? لو أدى إلى تفويت الصلاة الجماعة في المسجد صار من هين عنه that the person is gonna miss the salah he's got a fruit here and the jama'ah is allowed just started and he's gonna pass him and there's a fruit in front of him is he allowed to eat the fruit is he allowed to eat the fruit are you all with me does that make sense at that moment we say to him لا it's حرام for you to eat it he can't say to us brother where's your evidence I can't eat fruit Allah سبحانه وتعالى permitted everything for us to eat we will say, Naam, Asluhu, Naam. Lidatihi, Naam. Like now it's a wasila to a haram, a, um, a nahi, a prohibition, which is not to miss the jama'ah in which you can, the adani which you can hear. Does that make sense now? So, with that definition, we learn that, eh, that the mubah is ma la yata'allaku bihi amrun, wa la nahi alidati. No order or prohibition is attached to the, it in and within itself. Good, we've understood that. <laughs> Naam. And that is that qa'idah which we just mentioned now is the qa'idah which we'll inshallah study when we go to qawaid al fiqiyah which is al wasailu la hakam al maqasid. Al wasail, the means, ha, takes the ruling of the goal. Al wasilu, the means, will take the ruling of the goal, the final thing. It will take its ruling. And so it becomes imma wajiban. Sometimes the mubah, sometimes it becomes haram. Sometimes it even becomes, so sometimes it becomes wajib. Sometimes it becomes haram. Sometimes it becomes mandub and sunnah. And sometimes it becomes makruh. The mubah can take that. All of that is in accordance to what? The maqsad, yes, the goal, the ending, the last part of it. Good. Now we're going to move on swiftly, inshallah ta'ala. How can we know that something is mubah? How can one affirm ha, that this issue is mubah? وَتَثْبُتُ الْإِبَاحَةُ بِسِيَغٍ كَثِيرَةٍ وَرَدَتْ فِي النُصُوصِ الشَّرَعِيَةِ There are many ways where ibaha is affirmed. It can be affirmed and it can be established. And in the Qur'an, there are many ways it's identified. The ibaha. There are many ways it is it is known and identified. The first one is Nafyul Ism Wal Junah Wal Haraj. When Ism, Junah, and Haraj are removed, what does Ism mean? Allah says, No sin on you. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La Junah, there's no burden or hardship on you on this issue. Wala Haraj, and there's no, also no sin on you for this issue. Haraj and, and Ism is the same, roughly the same meaning. There's no sin on you for this issue. Once a sin and a hardship is removed from you on this issue, what does it become? That is the first one to identify that this issue is mubah. It's to identify that it's mubah. 
There's a verse in the Quran, ayah 198, in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 198, in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَنْ تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ لَيْسَ it is not. عَلَيْكُمْ it is not upon you جُنَاحٌ any burden. أَنْ تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Remember the word أَنْ أما أن Pay attention in Arabic. أَنْ 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 It's a harf يُحذف It's a harf يُحذف حرف الجر بالقياس. It should be لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَنْ تبتغوا في أن تبتغوا that the harf of jar was removed and it happens so you say it is not upon you any burden أن تبتغوا فضلا من ربكم to look for the bounties of your Lord and this ayah is referring to the people that have done hajj and they've done their finished their hajj for them to, to buy some products from Mecca and go to their lands in which they came to and merchandise and sell there's no it's mubah, right? Is this mubah for them? Allah removed from them what? Laysa alaykum junah. There is no burden on you. Allah also said subhanahu wa ta'ala in another ayah, tabarak wa ta'ala, that's the second one, surah al-nur. This one is going to be what? Haraj is going to be removed. Junah, we've seen it. Haraj is what we need. Surah al-nur, ayah 61. Allah says, Laysa ala al-a'ma harajun. It is not upon the blind one any bad, any 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 sin. ولا على الأعرج and the disabled one, I mean the lame one, also on him is not what, ha a sin. ولا على المريض and also on the ill one there is not what a, there is not a, a sin. Brothers, pay attention to this. What does it mean that there is no sin on it? It means the blind one. And the disabled one and the ill one to eat في مواكلة مقابلهم for them to eat with the people who are like them. Sorry, the people who are opposite to them. So who's the opposite to the blind? The one who can see. Who is the opposite to the disabled one? The able one. And who is the opposite to the ill one? The healthy person. Is no problem if he eats with those people. There's no junah. There's no hardship. Why? Because normally when a person is blind, or the person is disabled, or the person is ill, uh, they tend to not be able to stick to the etiquette of eating. He's blind, so he puts his hand everywhere. Also, he's, uh, he's disabled in the sense where, you know, maybe his body cannot, or the way he sits, or, or the way he, you know, so he opens his leg too much and he might cause hardship and st- distress and, you know, uh, hardship to the other Muslims. Allah is saying, there's no sin on you, don't worry. That's not you, you, you didn't do that to yourself. Also, wala ala al maridu haraj. And the ill one, people don't tell, oh, he's got flu, oh man, he's got flu. Nah, people, Allah is saying, there's nothing on you as well. Allahu Akbar. So who, who spoke about human rights first? The creator of this. So this ayah is what? Laysa ala al a'ma harajun. It's mubah for him. In what? Fi mu'akalati muqabilihim. For him to eat with the people he's with. There's no problem on, uh, on him. Also, also Allah wa ta'ala, he said in another ayah, إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَوْا سُورَةُ الْبَقَرَةَ آيَةَ 173 Allah says, إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالْدَّمَا وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَمَنِ الضُّرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِثْمَ وَالدَّمَ and the blood وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ and the, the meat of the what? the pig وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ and anything that is slaughtered on other than Allah's name فَمَنِ الضُّرَّ anyone who, has been, who is in a state of necessity غَيْرَ بَاغٍ and he is not a بَاغِ Ibn Jarir al-Tabari brought many, many inter- meanings of what the word بَاغِ means but he started with two Ibn Jarir al-Tabari started with what? he started with two the baghi is, is like the person who's what? The ayah is saying that if you're in a state of necessity, but not the baghi, he's not under it. He's not, he can't use this necessity as an excuse. Who is the baghi? It's the person who, uh, who uprises against the ruler. And so what happens to him when he uprises against the ruler? Huh? When he uprises against the ruler, what happens to him? 
he's out in the desert and he has nothing to eat. Without food, he's not dur. He's not allowed to eat. It's haram for him to eat. Uh, we want him to die. Because of the heart, he's a baghi, he's transgressed. The same way a man who travels to commit zina to a place and he's in the desert, he's got nothing to eat, he's not allowed to, he's, the rule is not, it's not for him as well. He mentions many more. The second one he mentions, rahimahullah ta'ala, is Aklul harami ma'ujud al-halal. Baghi is a person who eats haram whilst the halal is present. And he mentions others. A person who's going out for haram. You know, a person who, who does a highway robber, which is like the first one. He's a highway robber. He blocks the people's road. Huh? He blocks the people's road. He makes a checkpoint and no cars come. People here are his days. They saw him from the top and they cut away from him. They, know, they made another route. And no one's coming to him, so he's broke the whole day and he gets hungry. His car stops working and he gets hungry. So he sees a, 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 a pig. He feels like, you know, I've got a gun. Should I just shoot and eat it? Huh? Haram. He doesn't enter it. Wala adil. Adil means what? Once it's been made permissible for him and it's allowed for him and he fulfills the criteria of permissibility, then Allah says, Wala ad. And he doesn't also go above the need that he's given to him. Because remember, you know the qa'idah? The necessity, it is determined with what? To its need. Can't just say, you know what? Yesterday I was allowed, so I should, I should be allowed today. Or what you do is you take the haram, you put it in your fridge and you eat every day bit by bit. La. That day you ate it, fakat. You stay to its limits. And that you don't transcend above it. That is the first one, brothers. That's the first way of affirming, huh? the affirming of the, uh, uh, the way that uh, ibaha is mentioned. The second one is an-nasu ala al-hil. A text clearly says halal, halal. It says it. Such as what Allah says in the ayah, uhilla lakum, it is made permissible for you. Layla tasiyami, the fasting, the night of the fasting, meaning the month of, the month of Ramadan, the night you have, be, it is made halal for you. What? Arrafathu ila nisaikum. Arrafat means what? Sexual intimacy and to foreplay with your wives. It's allowed for you. You're allowed to do that with your wives. Ah. It's permitted for you. Now the word Allah used is Uhilla. Uhilla means what? Mubah. Ah, it's Mubah. Fear your choice. Ah. Good. That's the second. The third one, which is Adamu Nasi al Tahrim. Pay attention, brothers, and I want you to focus. The first two that I mentioned have one thing in common. The mubah is it's those two first one I mentioned is called mubah ash-shari, and you have to understand that the one that the ayah says, uh, you know, negates from you ithm and sinning. It also negates from you junah. It also negates from you haraj. The second one, which was an nasu al hil that it removes the the, the nas. The text comes and clearly says to you, it's halal. Those two, what did I say? They're called ibah to sharia. The Sharia stated and indicated huh, that it's Mubah. The Sharia stated that. The text, the Kitab and the Sunnah clearly indicated that it's Mubah. Correct? The third one, the third one, pay attention. Adam Nasi al It became Mubah because there's no text that makes it haram. The third one is. There is no text out there that says this thing is haram. Now, I hope you all understand what we're talking about here. We're talking about al-mu'amalat, transactions. We're not talking about ibadat here. Yeah. Ibadat, brothers. Ibadat, no. Mu'amalat, it becomes mubah. Adam nasi ala tahrim Yes, you're right. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, intifa'u dalil al-tahrimi dalil ala adam al-tahrimi. The absence of an evidence that to prohibit a matter is an evidence for the thing to be mubah. The absence of an evidence to say that this is haram is an evidence to say that this is mubah. That is what? Like in mu'amalat, transactions, buying, selling, marriage, what you can eat, what you can't eat, what you can wear, what you can't wear. Mubah. The essence is that it's allowed. 
The one who wants to say to you, this is haram for you to, 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 to wear, or it's haram, haram for you to eat, or haram for you to marry this person, is, he has to bring you evidence. If he doesn't bring it for you, the absence of that ha- uh, prohibition is an evidence for you that it's permiss- permissible. Good. As for ibadah, the, it has another point. The ibadah is adamu dalili dalilun ala bid'iyati wa tahrimi. Wa tahrimi. The ibadah, a worshipping, the absence of an evidence is an evidence that it's an innovation and that it's haram. Huh. That's what it is. Because the Prophet said in the hadith of Aisha, Man amila amala laysa alayhi amruna fawarad. Anyone who does an action that is not from our affairs is rejected. Rejected to the person. It won't be taken from them. So one has to keep that in mind. Like in the mu'amalat, the principle for it is what? Al-asru fil ashya'i nafi'ati al-hil. Every matter which is beneficial, the original essence of it is what? That is halal. That is halal. This one right now is called what? This one is called ibahatun asliya. The third one. So there's two types of ibaha. Ibahatun shar'iya and ibahatun asliya. Ibaha shar'iya, as I said to you, is that which has been affirmed by a text such as saying, لا جناحة أو saying لا ليس على الأعمى حرج أو أحلى مثلا you know um, and, uh, and evidence like that that's imdali- that is what a text to show what that is إباحة شرعية a textual إباحة the next uh, second one is called إباحة أصلية it is مباح because of it not finding something to prohibit it now, you'd wonder and ask yourself that what's the benefit in dividing in those two? They're mubah, mubah. Yeah, there is a benefit. There is a benefit. The ibahatun shar'iya, if a ruler sees the need to prohibit something which is ibahatun shar'iya, he's not allowed to do it. He should, he's not allowed. Such as, example, the marriage of four wives. A government, a government cannot come huh, and say that four women wives cannot be married. It's haram. Ta'addud zawjat, he cannot prohibit it. Are you with me? That's ibahatun shar'iyah. But if a ruler wants to prohibit something which is ibahatun asliyah, he's allowed to do it. For example, walking on this side of the road, is, are you allowed? Yes. Are you allowed to walk over the side of that road? Ah, the government says to you, you're going to walk on this side and you're not allowed to walk on this side. And when that traffic light turns red, you have to stop. This is called ibahatun asliyah. He's allowed to prohibit the people. And that benefit was mentioned by Ahmed uh, Muhammad Shakir in his ta'aliq of Musnad Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And I'm going to conclude there, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tuhu